In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the temptations of being a Christian, let alone being an Orthodox Christian, is that basically what we're on for is to behave ourselves wrong. Of course, we follow the commandments. Of course, we follow the precepts of the church. And that is what brings order to the church and order to our lives. But there is something greater here that we're witnessing. It's our call. It's the fact that God calls us by name. I want to share with you a passage from the Gospel of John uh, that we heard last great week. Truly, truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I am doing. He will even do greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. That is the underlying, I think, proclamation or, or manifesto of our Christian faith, are those couple verses. Because it is there that the Lord tells us in no uncertain terms that we are sharing in his very authority by being called by name to be a Christian. Why is he saying this, though? It seems kind of outlandish. We see Jesus raising the dead. We see Jesus healing the sick. We see Jesus performing a multitude of miracles in the Gospels. Yet he is saying to us that we will be doing greater things than he did. But when we look at it a little closer, it starts to make a little bit more sense, although we do not understand the mind of God. It's too vast for us to understand, but we get a glimpse of it. And that is that the wonder of this, that we're doing greater things than Christ, is that it is Christ doing his work through us. That is what the greater thing is. Yes, we saw Jesus doing directly these miracles like the gospel today in which he raised the paralyzed man, exercising his authority over sin, but also over physical illness and malady. And he is saying to us that he is going to be acting his authority through us. We will be partaking and participating and sharing in Christ's very authority. I mean, that is, how do we wrap our brain around this? But Jesus told us this, and we know that Jesus is trustworthy. And when he says something, we know that it's the truth. And when he says something, it means also that he will also give us whatever we need for our mission. As we see in the epistle that Paul wrote to the Romans. He is talking about gifts that each of us have received. And these gifts are so important because, once again, it illustrates for us that we are sharing in Christ's authority. We're acting in his authority. We are people of power because Christ is working through us. Now, how is he doing that? First of all, he gives us a specific gift and talent. We may think to ourselves, well, wait a minute, if I compare myself, oops, don't do that. But I'll go on. If I compare myself with someone else, I will say, well, what, what's my gift? What do I have to offer? The fact of the matter is, in God's eyes, all of our gifts are awesome gifts. There's no little gifts. They are all given to us by God to be him in this world. And that's what gives us authority. It's important to remember, I think, that, and I think we, we hear this verse, you know, 
How often? You know, we're made in the image and likeness of God. But when we ponder that, it has a lot to do with what we're talking about right now. We're made in the image of God. That means we're, we're given rationality. We're given free will. We're given the ability to choose the right. That is in the image of God. The likeness of God is our journey to deeper and deeper union with him. So that all of a sudden we become in the, in the, in the uh, we can't be, there's no difference in a sense between me and Christ. Because as Christ is working through us, power is taking place. We see this share in authority in Seraphim and Seraph today, who had a spiritual authority. And even in the midst of pain and suffering, at one time getting beaten up very badly by robbers who eventually converted. But he continues to teach us how to follow Christ without reservation. He, he teaches us that Christ is our everything. We see the authority being shared by the fathers of the six ecumenical councils. And their main job was to make sure that our faith would not be invaded by false teaching. And so we thank them that they shared in Christ's authority that when we follow our faith and our creed, we know it is true. You don't have to wonder, is it or not? The fathers of those ecumenical councils cleared the way for us to realize that what we have been given as a precious gift, our tradition, is one of truth, and it becomes our bedrock, our foundation that we can go through, through the day with, through the years with, until our last breath, in a very real sense. Our Lord not only gives us these gifts and talents as a vocation, a special mission that he has given us, but he also gives us these hour by hour, minute by minute, mini vocations in which he places us in different places with different people so that we can share his authority as we relate with these people in love. And so we can see that our mission encompasses everything. It's not just nine to five, because remember, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. And being a friend means that we are on all the time. And so Jesus promises us that even in our fatigue, well, we have to, t we have to relax, we have to have our time away. Jesus teaches us that. The time to take care of ourselves, that's very important. But he also teaches us that when we get up from our leisure or from our relaxation or from our sleep, he will continue to guide us and lead us with his authority, sharing his authority with us. And so today, as we kind of ponder this wondrous thing, that God, by calling us by name, says that, you know, you, that you are sharing in my very mission. It's an amazing thing. And, and it's one of those things where when we think about it even more and more, we realize that this calling is just filled with love for us, that he thinks about us, cares about us. When, he, when we pray, he, he is present with us. His eyes are gazing upon us. And that gives us the strength and courage then to go forth and to share his good news with the world. Glory be to God that he has called us by name and he continues to enliven us with his love so that we can love others as well. Blessing the Lord be upon you through his love for mankind always, now and ever, and on to the ages of ages.